Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's, we first of all want to, I want to just welcome you. I haven't had a chance to, maybe a couple of you. But just thank you for making the sacrifice to come here and be a part of this meeting. Uh, we have planned this and organized it so that it will be a blessing to you, a blessing to everybody. We're praying for that. And uh, whether you are a film producer or a script writer or a translator or a cultural advisor, whatever you are, you have a part to play in what we're talking about in these next two days. And uh, you have an important part. And uh, so you might hear a lot about media, you might hear a lot about animation, and maybe all your, although you might be interested, maybe you don't see yourself in that field. But I can tell you, we need everybody's help to do this work. Um, we need cultural advisors. In fact, many, many, many of our projects that we've done and our partners in the 2020, they have had uh, essential, critical help and assistance from SIL. Uh, so how many SIL people do we have? Raise your hand, even if you're remotely connected to SIL. Look at that. Fantastic. Hallelujah. Let's give them a clap. I can tell you we cannot do the 2020 vision without you. Absolutely. I mean, from the research, from even the list of the people group, to script writing, to ideas, all these kinds of things, we need your help desperately. And I can tell you many of your colleagues uh, that you know or don't know have assisted us greatly. We couldn't do our work without, without your help. And uh, so a special kudos and thank, thanks for SIL. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit later, but even our list, which is a pretty good list, but as you know, every list gets massaged over time. Uh, there, even with this list, in the past five years, we've had people groups go off the list because SIL said, hey, you know, uh, our experts went on the field and this really isn't a language. <laughs> Or this really isn't that language. <laughs> it's really two of these languages or something like that. And so uh, SIL and translators and cultural advisors, we need you desperately. And of course, the wonderful media people that are here and creatives, artists. Um, and so I just want to thank you all for being here and just let you know that you're all valuable. You're all valued in this vision. So just want to, this is a scripture that has always been uh, something that's really pushed us and really motivated us, this, uh, 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 that the Apostle Paul is telling the Romans, it's always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ is not known, so that I would not build on another man's foundation. Rather, as it is written, and so he's quoting from the Old Testament, those who were not told about him will see and those who have not heard will understand. In that last uh, part of the verse, it really incorporates the passion that is behind the 2020 vision. That people will see and hear the gospel message. Not just see and hear, but understand the gospel message. As uh, our dear brother Jim Green was sharing with us, uh, it is so important that people understand the message. Uh, as Jesus uh, said, the parable of the sower and the seed, uh, a, a very major um, uh, revelation that Jesus was trying to give his disciples was that if the word of God, if the presentation was not understood, fruit did not result. And we've seen that so many times, as Jim was mentioning, as many of you know, as uh, you've done uh, cross-cultural media of different kinds, once it's in that heart culture and in that heart language, it makes an impact that foreign media just can't. It just can't. And also, with indigenous media, it helps to destroy or push down the, the, the lie and the stereotype that Jesus is a foreign God and that the gospel is a foreign religion, a foreign message because we're actually putting it in the context of their culture and their world and not just showing them foreign things that we dub for them, although those things are necessary too sometimes. 
So this is what really motivates us. And here, this brother, some of you might know him, Paul Eshelman, who started the whole Vision of Jesus film. And really, he and Jim and others are pioneers in our midst. They're pioneers of media and missions. Before them, people were afraid often to use media and missions work, especially in a big, a big way like a cinema type movie to struggle against a lot of resistance because in those days if you were a believer many believers would never go and see a movie they didn't think that was Christian or playing cards or dancing or you know uh, but it's a different time right now it's a media rich world and now even the, the most conservative believers are watching TV and movies and it's okay it's actually a part of our world so um, we have really been blessed to have a special relationship with Paul and Jim and others from Jesus Film. They've been a continual encouragement to us. And I want to show this little video clip that was uh, a major inspiration for us in the 2020 vision. This is a media-oriented country. They've got Bollywood. They're used to media. And, uh, but what they don't have is they don't have any evangelistic films that are done with people out of their own tribal groups, their own language groups. The Jesus film has been translated into lots of these languages, but those are people from another culture. So what absolutely captivated them here was to see the Hindi film, the evangelistic film that Create International produced. Of course, I, uh, Create was just deluged with uh, individuals from various tribal groups that said, we'd like to have our, our own film in our own language, we'll use it. When they uh, offered the one that they saw in Hindi, you know, there was a rush like a mad stampede to get the few copies that were available. I love that one. I think we actually charged 50 rupees or something like that for it, <laughs> too, and uh, people went crazy for that. Uh, but this is this kind of thing, and, and leaders in the media and missions world encouraging us really has has uh, put a lot of uh, strength and passion behind this vision. So again, this is the, the mission statement of the 2020 vision. And actually, this whole 2020 vision started five years ago in Japan at a conference. And we just had, we, we decided for the first time to get together media people in one room and say, what can we actually do to directly affect reaching the, the least reached? And a, all of them that were there had been involved in doing in-house things, movies, promotional things, you know, all of that. But they really wanted to come together as a community of creative people and, and have an impact directly. And so we started praying and we started planning. And, that was, and the result of that was the 2020 uh, vision. We have this uh, short video I want to show you that explains the 2020 vision a bit more. In this century, we are presented with incredible opportunities unknown to previous generations. How will we utilize new art forms, media, and technology to advance the cause of reaching the last unreached people? The vast majority of unreached people are oral learners. Imagine compelling evangelistic movies, art, and animation being made for specific unreached people. Gospel media in their heart languages with their own people, using stories they can relate to. Indigenous audiovisual gospel presentations are media that combines visual and audio arts with a culturally relevant presentation of the good news in a heart language and style that is relevant to a people. The least evangelized mega people groups amount to 75% of all unreached people. It's been 2,000 years. We've gone from preach where we've added the ability to print, and now we live in the age of portray. So we are a part of the generation who is able to communicate Christ and His kingdom in a way that is captivating, it's engaging, it's visual. The least reached peoples, the most isolated peoples increasingly are having some access to media. And so it's our opportunity to take media to them, creating content with and for and by the people that we will be reaching. We've seen indigenous media created, and we just need others who can join in and help us finish this very significant task. 
The goal of the 2020 vision is to see indigenous audiovisual gospel presentations produced for the largest and least reached people groups by the year 2020. This is our opportunity as an arts and media community of believers to have a tremendous impact on the unreached peoples of the world. For the 2020 vision to be fully realized, partnerships of skilled individuals, churches, and mission agencies are needed to form teams. Why not give some of your time and use your skills and resources to help meet the tremendous needs of unreached people so that all may clearly see, understand, and embrace the gospel as their own? Together with God, let's create new communication tools that will bring salvation and transformation to all peoples. So we pray that the Lord uh, uh, speaks to you to be involved uh, in some way with the 2020 vision and join the other 30 plus mission agencies uh, that have um, become a part with us in this. And um, the, just to explain the idea of the 2020 vision, it's two kind of things. One is, of course, the ultimate goal by the year 2020. We want to have this accomplished. But also, it's about people being able to clearly uh, understand the gospel message. So this is the sort of 2020 vision element of it. So we, have, we want them to have 2020 vision in, in, their, in terms of their understanding of God's word. So we're committed to not only finishing it, but also to quality in that sense uh, that it's really touching the heart of the people. And as the, uh, the movie, the presentation says, oops, sorry, I went forward a little too far. Yeah, is that because of the largeness of these major people groups, it covers in terms of population uh, over 75% of all unreached people. Okay, and so the idea of this is basically, I'm just throwing this out, but the idea of this was to get agencies doing one of these projects every year or every two years, and that over the period of 10 years, we would uh, have the goal accomplished. So this is my little plus thingy here. All right. So when we got together, we all sort of prayed and said, okay, well, what is going to need to happen for us to actually make, uh, be successful with this vision? And the first step, of course, was the list, right? We need to identify the people groups that are without an indigenous presentation. And so uh, Todd Johnson and uh, David Barrett, have, have anybody heard of Todd Johnson and David Barrett and the World Christian Encyclopedia? work. Basically, their work on their database um, with Patrick Johnstone was the uh, core and the heart of all the databases that you see now that are being used by all these different organizations, Joshua Project, um, um, you know, IMB, all these different uh, organizations. And so uh, Todd Johnson, we have a very close relationship. He's sort of associate uh, with our ministry. And so he helps us keep the list very accurate. And of course, when our people are doing field research, we send that back to him. And often that we make adjustments, especially with our relationship with SIL. So we're, uh, we needed to have the list and we needed to have someone to, keep, to, to maintain that list, make sure it was accurate. So then uh, identifying that list, all of you have a copy of this in your little manual there, plus... Um, or your booklet, uh, plus on the walls there you'll see large versions of it that you can look at. Also, the, the 74 remaining groups that don't have a project initiated, that's in the yellow color. They're the ones that have names that are on the big map uh, on the floor back there that we'll be praying into. So each ministry and agency would adopt uh, people groups for production. That was one thing, and we taught, we prayed about what should be the process of this, of adoption. It should be prayer, right? It should be God leading us, telling us that this is 
what he has for us as an organization. We need to look for partners. No one organization can do one of these projects. And that's part of the reason why we desired to give away the vision to the whole body of Christ, because it isn't just a create vision or a frontiers vision or a, you know, uh, you know, a Caleb Project vision or whatever it might be, it is, a, it is a body of Christ vision. It's that big. And so we need partnerships, so we've emphasized that, and then partnerships that result in production. Uh, two years ago, uh, this was a list of some of the people groups that were adopted by different organizations. Uh, and um, praise be to God, after a couple of years now, uh, all of these you see marked, highlighted there, uh, are either done or in the process of being done. Here's the second half of that list and the, and the ones that uh, have been done or in the process of being done, which is quite amazing. And that's not everything that's been done, but that's just from that sp the, the groups that were attending the last VMSF. Okay, so they said we need a community website. We need something where we can uh, have all the information and the resources so we can share the vision. So we produced uh, a 2020 vision website, which you can visit. It has a little thing that, a little countdown that's continually updated. It has uh, testimony videos uh, for you to be able to share the vision. And then it has, of course, uh, a description of the adoption process and other, other things that are there. And I encourage you to take a look at it. Also has an interactive map where the people groups are and where, what, where they are in the process, if they're finished, if they're in process, and so forth. Uh, and that's kept updated. And as, as you see here, if you hover over the dots, it actually gives you the name of the people group, its population. And if you, if you select that, if you click on the dot, it will take you to a people profile that gives more information about that people group. So there's a heap of good uh, information on that website we've produced. Next, training. We talked about how we need to help people in the area of training. So one of the, um, uh, the training programs that we uh, started was the Frontier Filmmaking Seminar. And I think, uh, Steve, are you going to be, you're going to be showing us, so I don't want to steal your thunder by showing the video, but Steve is going to share a bit more about that, but it's basically a five or six week intensive seminar that anyone can go and participate on that. You get training for several weeks and then you actually do a evangelistic film project for one of the 2020 Vision Peoples together. So it's a whole learning process and experience process. And uh, that's, that's been a great blessing. It's worked tremendously. Uh, next, to establish uh, somewhere where there'd be a clearinghouse for all these videos, you know, all these films and animations. How can people get a hold of them? We, we didn't want to just make these films and put them on a shelf. The idea is to get people be sharing the gospel through these indigenous films with the people that they work for uh, or work with. So we started this um, a website called indigitube.tv and now we have about 350 films and animations all downloadable for free in two different formats on there and other resources as well. Then launching the 2020 vision of course and we we did that uh, in 2010 a little bit later in 2010 but that's okay uh, and uh, at the end of the 2020 vision I guess we're gonna have a big party <laughs> And then, and then that's when I'll share my next vision. No, I'm just, um, I just say that for my staff just so that they feel tired. And so some key elements in finishing this task are a passion and a determination, right? A passion for the people, having God's heart for these people. They're real people. They aren't just numbers. They're real people that don't know Jesus. Never giving up attitude. We have to have that, Right? I'm looking at all the producers and directors out there and other uh, creatives. You have to have an attitude of never giving up, believing that God wants this and that he's going to make it happen. And he, he is so faithful, he always does, and seeking to use all possible means. And that also gets into this fourth one, which is taking advantage of all media forms. And this is really important. We live in a media-rich world. People are already used to films, they're already used to music videos, they're used to animations. 
So we need to use all possible means that God gives to uh, us and uh, communicate, still committed to communicate indigenously and clearly communicating in that culture and heart language, but using every means possible. So part of the 2020 vision is that we, we tell people, yes, if you have a music video that shares Jesus in that culture and that heart language, it qualifies, you know, for a tool for the 2020 vision, a film, an animation, whatever it might be. There's all kinds of creative solutions and tools. So creating new communication tools so that all possible means some might be saved. So where are we right now? How have we done? Here's a little look at how we've done. Starting in 2010, the blue color there are uh, uh, groups that were not adopted yet. So you can see that they were the majority in 2010. And you can see that they disappeared as far as not being adopted by 2014. The green ones are projects that have been completed. And uh, the red ones are projects that are in process. And then the, the uh, yellow ones are orangish yellow. They are ones that have someone focusing on them and committed to them, but no project's been uh, initiated yet. That's the 74 that we are focusing on this time. And now I want to show you a list of the people groups that actually have been completed in this first five years of the 2020 vision. All of these are people groups that never had an indigenous presentation before and now do in the last five years. That's 91 new presentations. Yeah, praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's, I, I tell you that I did not have the faith for this. I had enough faith to take the first step, but that was about it. But to see this happen, this is a God thing. Only God can do this. Those of you that know what it takes to produce a film or an animation, this is a heck of a lot of work. But God's doing it because the whole body of Christ is beginning to see this as a measurable and worthy goal. Uh, so, of course, I, I really firmly believe part of the reason for this acceleration is that there's a convergence happening right now. We all know there's a lot of major mission milestones that are happening right now in missions. Uh, in fact, in the next three years or so, the, the, the uh, finishing the task movement will, ha will have initiated or helped to see uh, a Christian worker doing church planting in every people group in the world in the next three years. We're talking about a group that has 50 or 100 people all the way up to tens of millions of people. They will all have workers in them. That's never happened in the history of the church. And we, could, we will probably see that in the next three to four years. That's a huge milestone. The, the, pro, you know, the job's not done, right? <laughs> we still have to reach all those people and get more workers in there. But these kinds of milestones and the Bible and so forth, we are going to see this in our lifetime actually happening. And uh, yeah, amen. It's because of Jesus, and God gives us the privilege of being alive at this time. So advances in communications, technology, has enabled us, even some of the folks here that don't consider yourself techies or film producers, you can produce films, you can produce animations. In the EMDC, they, have, they gave these guys a little app where they can actually do stop-motion animation presentations with their phone. They just press the button and take the picture, then move the thing, press the button, take the picture, move the thing, and then it created a whole stop-motion film for them at the end. I mean, this is, this is amazing, the technology that's available in the area of creating communication pieces. So that kind of uh, hands-on, that kind of commonality uh, and, and user uh, ease with a commitment to making them culturally relevant and in the heart language is a powerful combination, and God's enabling us to do it. And uh, also, I, I like to call this a renaissance in, in visual arts. It, we're, we're, we've never seen so many people be able to get involved in visual arts. Everyone here is either involved in some way in creating some new visual arts or you want to. 
and the tools are available to do it. We'll look at some of those as well in the next couple of days. Okay, so we're at a very important point in human history. Okay, we're experiencing unprecedented unity. Uh, you look right here. How many organizations, uh, Clyde, did you count how many organizations we have just here? We don't know how many. It's over 40, I know. But in the EMDC, over 150 organizations. All together, everyone's like talking the same language. We got the same heart. We're like helping each other and sharing resources with, you, with each other. This is like, you know, this has not happened before in the history of the church. God is up to something amazing. Amen. I bet that felt good. So I'm often uh, reminded of this scripture. When uh, Nehemiah was uh, bringing the children of Israel back to the law of God, right, and later building the, the, the wall and so forth, it says, also in Judah, the hand of God was on the people to give them unity of mind to carry out what the king and his officials had ordered following the word of the Lord. So it isn't just, you know, that I'm asking you to do something that Clyde's asking you to do or something. We're asking you to do this because we know this is what God's doing and what God said needs to be done. And uh, I just have two slides, and my timing is going off. I'm doing pretty good, actually. Okay, so now what? Uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts from one body, so it is with, with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And as I said at the beginning of this, we need all of you, everyone here, we need all of you to accomplish this important task. And I'm just ending with this slide. So this is what we need to see. 74 of these people groups, the ones that are in yellow, have no indigenous gospel film or animation or media piece. This is what we need to see. We need to see God move on our hearts together as a family, as a community, and, and commit to seeing these uh, dear ones have an opportunity to hear and see the gospel of Jesus, the love of God, in a way that makes sense to them and touches their heart and transforms their lives. And that's what this conference is, and the 2020 is all about. So these groups are going to be before us in uh, just a little bit. We're going to be able to pray together and look at the different lists and just respond to this. You know, all these presenters have to go fast, but you can see the emotion that we, ha we carry for these people, the lost people. And so there's probably a lot of time that we would need for question and answer, but we're going to try to keep moving in the program. And... We saw principles of unity, talked about partnership, and this afternoon we're going to share some case studies of partnerships, but we were really privileged to have Chuck still here with SIL, and he had very popular seminars. I think he got a repeat seminar. How many went to Chuck's seminar? Okay, about half the room. So he's going to do a 